Our gospel comes from the 22nd chapter of Luke, beginning with the 7th verse. Then came the day of the unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus went, so Jesus went with Peter and John and said, Go and make and prepare the Passover meal for us that we may eat it. They also asked him, Where do you want us to make preparations for it? Listen, he said to them, When you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, he took his place at the table, and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to the, by that by one whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another, which one of them it could be who would do this. This is the Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, our Lord, and the Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Somebody asked me once if I thought Jesus was Lutheran. And I said, well, Jesus has to be Lutheran because he's always talking about food or going someplace where there is food or he is making food. I mean, if you look at Jesus' ministry, he's, I mean, his first real ministry act is at a wedding where he makes wine out of water. He's always, you know, he's the feeding of the 5,000, he's making bread and fish multiply. He's always going to this meal or that meal with, at somebody's house. Or even, even after he rises from the dead, one of the first things he does is he eats bread and fish with his disciples. Jesus must be a Lutheran because everywhere he goes, there is food. And today here, we have the story of Jesus and his disciples eating the Passover meal. Now, the Passover was a um, Jewish holiday of remembrance of when God freed them from slavery in Egypt. And each year they ate this Passover meal, remembering how God had freed them. It is one of the most holy days and festivals of all of Judaism. And so here, Jesus, being a good Jew, gathers his disciples together to eat the Passover meal. Now, in this meal, Jesus takes bread in the words that we've heard in mega communion service. He says, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he takes a cup of wine and says, this is my blood for you and for a new covenant, a new promise. Do this in remembrance of me. Here he gives his disciples really a piece of himself gives us a piece of himself. But I don't know if you've noticed something that's really interesting about this story. We've heard it a lot. We kind of know the words. But did you notice that all of the disciples are present? All 12 of them, including the one who will betray him. Jesus, this person who seems to be going everywhere with food, gives himself his betrayer. Think about it. Jesus says, this is my body, and, st and at, sitting at the table with him is Judas who will betray him. He takes that body, he drinks from that cup just as all of the other disciples do. Jesus feeds his betrayer. And Jesus feeds us. Because we are 
just like Judas. We are sinners. But Jesus invites us to come to his table to be fed. You know, the Pharisees are always complaining with Jesus that he's always eating with tax collectors and sinners. And here at this most holy meal, nothing changes. Jesus comes to feed sinners, to feed them forgiveness, to feed them hope, to feed them new life, to feed us. Because we need it. We need to be fed by Jesus. We need to be fed so that we have strength to get through that day, that really hard day when we're overwhelmed with grief or pain or anxiety or stress. We need to be fed, to be forgiven, to be reminded that Christ has died for us, that we are free, that there is a Passover meal for us as well, that we are free from all bondage. We need to be fed so that our guilt and shame will go away. We need to be fed so that we have strength to just make it through each and every day. We need this meal. And though we come forward as sinners, as though as we have we come forward as people who betray Jesus, who deny Jesus, who turn away from Jesus, who ignore Jesus, Jesus still feeds us. Jesus still feeds you. This is my body given for you. This is my blood of the new covenant, of a new promise of eternal life given for you. Because when we come forward to this table to receive the body and blood of Christ, we receive forgiveness, life, and salvation in Jesus' name. And we need all of those things each and every day. So no matter what meal you have coming up in the next couple of days, with this big, massive family Easter meal, or even it's just a little TV dinner in your house. Remember Jesus, who feeds you, feeds you with his grace and his mercy, feeds you with his word and his love, feeds you every day, so that you would know that you are saved and redeemed by Jesus Christ. For that, we can say thanks be to God. Amen.